Hello, this is Kevin Taylor from Steel Beam Calculator Limited. Uh, today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to design a steel beam using our online steel beam calculator. Um, first of all, what we need to do is determine the length of the beam that we're going to, de uh, to design. Um, what we tend to do is take the dimension from the centre of the end bearing to the centre of the end bearing. So say for example if we have 150mm end bearing at both ends of the beam we take the clear dimension between the supports and add on 150mm uh, which is sort of 75mm on, on both sides. So say for example the beam that we're looking to design is, is 3 meters. Okay, uh, second we need to uh, sort of pick a beam. So if you pick something that sounds reasonable, um, we pick uh, a 178 by 102 by 19 UB. Um, then thirdly we need to sort of identify what loads are acting on that beam. Um, I think the case we'll look at today is just a, a steel beam that is supporting floor joists only. Um, so if we have a quick look at that, there's a there's a drop down menu here with lots of different loads on it, so you can select one of those. If it's if it's not on the list, you can always pick other. Um, so for today, we'll look say a timber floor domestic dwelling, um, and that gives you the blanket loading there. But then we need to know the width of the floor joists that are supported. So say for example, this particular steel beam has a joist three meters um, long. Timber, timber floor joists on both sides of the beam. So you've got um, sort of three meters on one side of the beam and three meters on the other. So in effect, the, the beam would be required to support a three meter wide strip of, of floor loading. So if we enter the, the, the width of load perpendicular to the beam, in this case, it's a floor. If it's, if it's a wall, we have to input the height of the wall. Um, but generally, if it's generally a floor or roof load, you just put the load on plan. If it's a roof load, you put the load on plan. Um, so you have to carefully work that out. So okay, we put three meters into here. Uh, we can add more load details, um, but we'll not in this particular instance. Um, then obviously we need to look at the variable load safety factors and the permanent load. The variable load is, for example, the people that are, that are on the floor, um, you know, the furniture, things that can vary. Permanent load is like the self weight of the floor, also the self weight of the beam. The, the package automatically allows for the self weight of the steel beam, so we don't need to input that as an additional load. Um, is the beam fully restrained? It's generally not. Um, it's sometimes we've got concrete floor on there or particular detail. We've got timber floor joists that go into the beam and restrain it in a particular way. I mean, there is guidance out there, so the, the Steel Construction Institute do publish certain guidance on, on how you can achieve full restraints but generally you assume that there isn't a length between lateral restraints generally that's the end points of the beam at both ends of the beam or sometimes if you've got a beam ting into it, um, it, it say for example it's middle you can put the, the, the length between lateral restraints as 1.5 meters in this particular case we'll leave that as the default of three um, deflection limits how, that's how much the beam sags when it's loaded um, so the variable load, it's the span divided by 360, uh, which will give you a dimension in millimetres. And again, for the total variable and permanent load, we've got span over 250. I mean, you can change these if you like, if it's a bit more critical. If you've got a bifold door and you don't want the beam to deflect very much, you can change that. Okay, so what the next thing we'll do is we'll run the calculation. Um, here you can either download the report or you can customise the report just by adding a, a project name. So we'll do that in this particular instance. So. Uh, we'll just call this um, Denby Farm, let's say, and the job number, um, one, two, three, four in this case, and we'll call this Steel Beam 1. Uh, okay, so if, if we now download the report, and look here, we can see the, the data that we've inputted, and also this is the loading. Um, so this is the bending moment diagram, the shear force diagram, so that gives you the reaction at the end of the beam, which is roughly about sort of 14 kilonewtons. Uh, that, that's how much the beam sags, the deflection diagram, and here are the results, so it's, it's all okay. It's highlighted in red if it's not, so we just check that those are okay. Um, and that's about it really. There are just a few notes there, so just have a quick look through those. Um, it's all relatively straightforward stuff.